All right, guys, welcome to Three Mormons. We have an awesome guest with us today. His name is Stephen Smoot. That's me. Stephen, I, did I see you on Conan O'Brien? Yes, uh, I have in fact been made fun of on national television by Conan O'Brien. Now that bit is a little bit obscene, but it's hilarious. Yes. It's yeah. great. And so if you want to check it out. If you want to see me being made a fool, you know, on national television. <laughs> Conan I'm really sure it'll do great him. things for my credibility for this episode. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so he's honestly an almanac, as you'll see in that video of Star Wars. Uh, he knows how to pronounce even space shrimp. We get a lot of comments and a lot of people ask us, is there any archaeological evidence to back up the Book of Mormon? Yeah. Um, and my reply is always, well... I, I think it's a bit of an unfair question the way the way we phrase it because you know how many Native unfair American though? tribes were wiped out and destroyed. Right. How much do we not have access to? Well, I mean, there, some aspects could be unfair when you're talking about like infrastructure and like you know other civilizations coming into the continent. But I think questions like you know wildlife, like it even talks about elephants. You know, mm -hmm. it, it talks about horses. You Barley know, in yeah, South yeah. South America, and so you know, shouldn't those things carry on through time? Without a doubt. Without yeah. a doubt. I think. I think. There are definitely very honest questions about yeah, Book yeah. Mormon archaeology and some that are a little bit impossible to prove, you know? Right. But you're going to tell us a little bit about, about Nahum. Nahum. Yeah. Yes, Nahum is great. I love Nahum. And Nahum uh, absolutely answers the question, is there any archaeological evidence for the Book of Mormon? And the answer is yes. yes. Um, it is a bullseye if there ever was a bullseye for the Book of Mormon. And it starts in the very first book, First Nephi. So First Nephi starts with Nephi and his family. They leave Jerusalem in Israel, and they travel through what is probably, almost certainly, the Arabian Peninsula. And uh, while they're traveling, they name all these different locations that they stop at. So, for example, they say the place which we did call Shazar is one of the locations. And this happens two or three times. Until, in Nephi's record, he says, we arrived at a place which was called Nahum. And it switches into the passive voice. And this suggests to a lot of scholars that this was a previously named location. This was not a location that the family named, but it was already named that when they got there. Mm -hmm. And it's here at this place, Nahum, where Ishmael, a member of the group, he dies and they have to bury him there. All right, so once they do that, Nephi then says, we went, I think he says, we went nearly eastward mm -hmm. is the language right. in the Book of Mormon. So they go east after there and they hit the place which they call Bountiful because it had abundant fruit and honey and timber and so forth. It was sort of this oasis in the middle of the desert. And that's where they build a ship, so it's on the coast, and that's where they sail off to the New World. Now, what's significant here is this place, Nahum. Uh, and the reason for that is, is uh, in the 1990s, a group of non-Mormon archaeologists uncovered uh, some altars that had these inscriptions on them. And the inscriptions on these altars identified the name of the region as Nahum. Uh, it was the tribal name. So it talks about this guy who donated these altars to a local temple, and they identify him as the Nehemite, so the person from Nehem, the region. Got it. And by piecing all the clue from clues together in the text, Mormon scholars have been able to show that this Nehem, this Nehem region of what is now modern-day Yemen, is almost certainly the Nehom of the Book of Mormon. But I got a question. So you said Nehom, but Nehem sounds yeah. like... A sneeze. So it's like, right. oh, how, yeah. do we what know? Is the difference? how do we know? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> um, what you have to understand with Semitic languages is that when you write them, uh, you don't write them with vowels, or at least you don't have to write them with vowels. Most, common, most often you don't. And so the altar, the inscriptions, it just has NHM, Nehem, the consonants. And the way that you vowel it might change over time. Um, so today the region is pronounced Nehem, I believe. Um, it's also variously called Nehem with an E, Nehem with an I. To call it Nehom is not that much of a stretch at all. Right. So the, the, the consonants are right. The vowels are okay. It's, it's with an acceptable variance of yeah. what we have going on here. And more importantly, though, it's the location. It's the date of the altars. They predate Lehi. Right. Again, the place which was called Nehom. They predate Lehi. It's the right place. And then the little cherry on top is... When you go eastward from this region in modern-day Yemen, you hit the Dofar region of Oman, where many Book of Mormon scholars think we have Nephi's Bountiful identified. Right. Yeah, so this is uh, absolutely an archaeological evidence for the Book of Mormon. Um, it's, I think it's an absolute bullseye for the Book of Mormon, and you can hold it up to show, look, this is evidence, you know, to answer this question. But, but how do we know that John Smith didn't go to find the place and put it in the book? John Smith... Well, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, John Smith. Well, John Smith, that guy, yeah. yeah John Smith. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Joseph Smith, did he, yeah. you know, did he just go 
go there and see it and write it in the Book of Mormon? You mean, did he go all the way over to modern Arabia, to the Arabian Peninsula? And um, He's a 20-year-old. Well, su- well suffice it to say, there is, there is no <laughs> historical evidence that Joseph Smith ever made his way to the Arabian Peninsula, so I don't think that's very likely. All right. <laughs> Just wondering. So, guys, all this stuff is great, but at the end of the day... Your faith isn't going to be made by evidence. The Holy Spirit exists for a reason, and he's supposed to work through you. So if you're struggling with your testimony, you need to go inward, you need to ask of God, you need to pray and read your scriptures, and you need to cultivate it that way. Understand that this can be faith-affirming. It can complement your faith. Uh, It can help you have a more robust faith, especially in facing challenges that Mm -hmm. we sometimes encounter. Yeah, these elements are facets of history, which can be faith-affirming because they can accompany the stories and the history that is already written by the, from the Restoration. And so I think it's really important that we don't fall in the t- into the trap of proof texting, where we say, oh, because Nahum exists, the Book of Mormon is true. Mm-hmm. You know, it's this idea of taking a scripture and saying, well, this is true and this is true, so they make sense. But we need to realize that, like you said, the Book of Mormon is a, is a central part of our testimony you know, of the Restoration. And so... We need to give a shout out to Book of Mormon Central because yes. they are on, like they're on the front lines. They are the warriors, and they really have great scholarship. Be sure to follow Three Mormons on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to us here on YouTube. If you don't follow us, we won't have enough money for groceries. We'll die. Mm-hmm. You have a family. You'll be as dead as Ishmael was at Nahum. Yeah, I'll be as dead as. That sounds like a rap lyric. Like, there you go. We're gonna, okay, we're pitching Throwing some shade Mormon. at Three Mormons. Yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> you'll be as dead as Ishmael at Nahum. Yo, I'm at the home where you went. I gotta get groceries, <laughs> but I gotta get what? Yo, she's. I don't know. You are a modern day ludicrous, sir. <laughs> <laughs>